This tutorial is for 4th grade, Module 5, Lesson 8. In this lesson, we will continue to look at how multiplication can help us find equivalent fractions. The directions say express the equivalent fractions in a number sentence using multiplication. If I look at my first example, the model started off as showing us two-thirds. The model was broken into three equivalent pieces. Two of the pieces were shaded. When we divided the model in half, we doubled the amount of pieces that were shaded, and we doubled the amount of pieces that make up the whole. There are now six pieces that make up the whole, and four of those pieces are shaded. I go to my next question. I want to start by figuring out the original fraction. So if I look at the columns, I can see that there are three pieces that were shaded out of the four that made up the whole. So we started with three-fourths. Then I want to look to see how many rows we divided the model into. I divided it into three rows. That means instead of having three pieces that are shaded, I'm going to triple that amount. I now have nine pieces that are shaded. And instead of having four pieces that make up the whole, I tripled that amount, and I have 12 pieces that make up the whole. The new fraction shows us 9 twelfths, but it is still equivalent to 3 fourths. In the next section, we're told to decompose the shaded fractions into smaller units as given. In the first model, I need to show my final fraction as tenths. Now, the original fraction is three-fifths, because there's three pieces shaded out of the five that make the whole. If I need to turn this into tenths, I have to ask myself, how many rows will I need to turn the fifths into tenths? Well, since five times two equals ten, that tells me I need two rows. Now, instead of having five pieces that make up the whole, I have ten. And instead of having three pieces shaded, I doubled that amount, and I now have six pieces shaded. That tells me three-fifths is equivalent to six-tenths. In the next fraction, we're starting with three-fifths again. Only this time, we need to show it as fifteenths. If I use that same reasoning, if I need my fifths to become fifteenths, I know I have to draw three rows, because five times three is fifteen. So I'll draw my three rows, and now I have fifteen pieces that make up the whole. Instead of having the original three pieces that were shaded, I've tripled the amount of pieces. Now I have nine pieces that are shaded. Three-fifths, then, is equal to nine-fifteenths. In the last section, I'm going to use the area models to show that the number sentences are true. The first problem says two-fifths is equal to four-tenths. I'll start by dividing the fraction model into five equal pieces, and I will shade in two of those pieces. Here are my two-fifths. So I have the first fraction. Now I have to think, well, how am I going to turn my fifths into tenths? Well, since five times two equals ten, then I know I need two rows. So if I draw a horizontal line, I've divided it into two rows. Now I have ten pieces that make the whole. I've also doubled the amount of pieces that are shaded. Now I have four pieces that are shaded. This proves that two-fifths is equivalent to four-tenths. On the next question, we're going to start with two-thirds, so I'll divide the area model in two-thirds, and I'm going to shade two of those pieces. So now I have my two-thirds. I need to show that it is equivalent to eight-twelfths. Well, I have to think, how am I going to turn my thirds into twelfths? Since three times four gives me twelve, that means I need to draw four rows. So I'm going to divide my model into four rows. 
that gives me 12 pieces in all. And instead of having two pieces that are shaded, I have eight pieces that are shaded. I multiplied both my numerator and my denominator by four to show that two-thirds is equivalent to eight-twelfths.